Hello again, everybody, and a happy Memorial Day to you. Skip Carey greeting you from Candlestick Park, where the Braves are about to open a three-game series against the San Francisco Giants. And I'll tell you what, last 12 hours, 24 hours, been perhaps the most frantic in Braves history. Two big deals. One, Roberto Kelly coming, Deion Sanders going. The other, Greg Olson returning, Milt Hill being designated for assignment. A lot of stuff going on, and my partner Joe Simpson visits with Bobby Cox about it. Joe? All right, Skip, thanks. I'm down here with Bobby, and needless to say, a big deal yesterday, Bobby, bringing Roberto Kelly here for Deion Sanders. What does Roberto bring to your ball club, and how do you intend to use him? Well, first of all, Joe, he's a fine, uh, fine athlete and a good, real good ball player. He's an exceptional outfielder defensively, and he has power, and he has running speed. So we'll hit him at the top of the order. I've got him leading off today, and I haven't really sat down and talked with him yet. I, I met him just a few seconds ago, so he just got into town. But... He, he's been hitting, uh, you know, he can hit leadoff, he can hit third, he can hit fourth. There's a lot of places he can hit, but he's a quality guy. What about the reaction today, the day after in the clubhouse? Have you talked to some of the guys about it? Not really, no. Uh, the reaction is baseball's baseball, and uh, we traded a real good player for another real good player. Is about the only way you can look at it. It was kind of a shocker because this thing uh, really didn't even get started until a couple days ago, and... There was completely uh, no rumors about it, and we weren't shopping Dion at all. <clears throat> and they called John, and that's the way it got started. Certainly not lost in the shuffle, but taking a back seat on the headlines would be Greg Olson. He's here. Yeah. How are you going to use him? Well, we'll get him in uh, as quick as we can. I'm still going to lock up today's ball game with McMichael. I'd like to see Greg, you know, pitching a seventh or eighth once or, or twice before I, I use him as a closer. But... You know, we played it by the seat of our pants for the last three years, and we're doing it again this year, so we'll just have to have to wait and see. All right, Bobby, good luck today. Sure. John Smoltz against John Burkett in the first of three here at Candlestick Park, and we'll be back with the lineups right after this. Nineteen ninety four Atlanta Braves Baseball on TBS is brought to you by Bud Light. If you want great taste that won't fill you up and never let you down. Make it a Bud Light by Delta Airlines. You'll love the way we fly. And by Aflac, insuring over 38 million people worldwide. Driver, do you have any Bud Light in your vehicle? Yes. Then I am Mr. Gally Weepich. You mean Dr. Galakowicz? Yes, I am. This is so cool. First time in a limo, doctor? In a limo this small. If you want great taste that won't fill you up and never let you down, make it a Bud Light. Watch the magic of Turtle Wax. Turtle Wax Color Magic Color Enriching Car Polish. While the magic of Color Magic helps hide minor scratches and enriches your car's color, the science of Turtle Wax gives you 12 months of unsurpassed protection and beating. Even on old neglected finishes, Color Magic works its magic, while Turtle Wax product science removes years of oxidation and brings back the shine. Get the magic and science of Turtle Wax. Turtle Wax Color Magic Color Enriching Car Polish. Rangers. Cherokees. Broncos. Explorers. Pathfinders. Blazers. Full by four. On road. Or off. Boy, do we have a tire for you. The tough LTX light truck series. From the show. Not a sellout at Candlestick on Memorial Day, but certainly a hostile crowd greeting the Braves on their first trip back to San Francisco after winning the Western Division Championship last year. And certainly every time the Braves' name is mentioned, lineup wise or anything, this crowd gives them a resounding boo. Here's the Formula 2001 starting lineup today for Bobby Cox. And as he mentioned, Roberto Kelly will lead it off and play center field. Then it's Blouser and Klesko. Everything pretty much the same as you would expect with John Smoltz on the mound with Charlie O'Brien behind the plate. And Smoltz batting ninth. Defensively for the Giants in the outfield today, Barry Bonds in left, Darren Lewis in center, Willie McGee in right. Matt Williams leading the National League in home runs with 18 at third base. Royce Clayton having a fine year at shortstop. 
John Patterson has to play second base because Robbie Thompson still on the DL with a sore shoulder. Dave Martinez makes his first start of the year at first base today. Kurt Manwaring's behind the plate, and John Burkett on the mound will make his 12th start, a 4-3 and three record. He's gone through a period where, as you look at his numbers, he had some control problems for a brief time, but he's back on track, had a good, good outing against San Diego in his last start, only six hits allowed and two runs over seven innings. The league, however, hitting 280 against him. His numbers here at Candlestick, though, when you compare that to his overall wins and losses and ERA, a little high here at this ballpark, and it should be a good day to hit. About 77 degrees and the wind blowing out. Umpires for today's ball game, a good crew. Jeff Kellogg behind the plate. Mike Winters at first, veteran Bruce Fremming at second, and Jerry Crawford at third base. Seems like Bruce Fremming's here every time we come to Candlestick. As Roberto Kelly gets ready to take his first at bat in a in an Atlanta Brave uniform, might want to take it some take a look at some career comparisons between he and Deion Sanders. 260 batting average for Deion, 286 for Kelly. One thing about Roberto, even though he doesn't lead off that much, his on-base percentage is over 350. So that will certainly play into his favor. And for the Braves, if he's able to reach base, he has nine stolen bases, although he has been caught eight times. And certainly, when you look at a stolen base comparison there and home runs, Kelly with a lot more at-bats in his career than Deion Sanders. But he's set to go. Leading off for Atlanta in the first of three at Candlestick. Really, from a weather standpoint, Skip, couldn't be much better. And also, they've made some vast improvements here. You can see that there's very little, well, there's no dust and dirt on the infield anymore. They've made a rubber turf out of the warning track in front of the dugouts now, not a walk-in dugout. They are actually recessed below ground level. So, in my way of thinking, I'm not sure that they could do much more to improve this place. Oh, I, good. I agree with you, Joe. I think they've done a wonderful job. It's, it's never going to be ideal because of the weather. And they can't control that, but they've controlled or tried to control everything else to the best of their ability, and I commend them for it. Roberto Kelly leads it off. He does not like leading off. And Bobby's going to have to do some thinking about that. I mean, Bobby Cox, Roberto will do whatever they want him to do, but if he had his brothers, he'd like to hit lower in the order. He's two out of seven in his career against John Burkett. And he takes a pitch low, and the game is underway. One ball, no strengths. Mike Winters is the home plate umpire. They've switched it on us, and Jeff Kellogg is at first. A ball and a strength. Breaking ball right in there. It's one and two. In the other baseball, Florida and Houston, 3-3. Bottom of the seventh. Scott Service, a home run. Colorado hammering the Mets. 12 to 2 in the ninth. Just missed outside. 2 and 2. Phillies and Cubs scoreless after an inning and a half. The other action later on. American League Boston beat Kansas City today. 6 5 the final score. Minnesota lost to Seattle 12 0 the final there. Keith Mitchell, a couple of home runs in that game. The former Braves outfielder. He's just off the disabled list. Good for him. Milwaukee 4-3 over Texas after eight. White Sox lead the Yankees 1-0 after two and a half. And the other end action is later. Kelly stays alive. He got to the ballpark at 11.20 this morning, local time. Went straight into Bobby Cox's office, so he's barely had time to get fitted for his uniform and some new shoes. But he's ready to go. His last time he faced Burkett, he hit a home run. He awaits the 2-2 pitch. Full count now, three and two. I tell you, I grow a little weary. Dion says that he thinks he was traded because of a personal first the payoff pitch. Check swing foul, still three and two. Personal vendetta on the part of John Sherholtz. John Sherholtz is the guy that signed him in the first place after the Yankees released him. All John Sherholtz wants is for the Braves to win. That's what he gets paid to do. John's also the guy that signed him to that three-year deal. After he had stayed away from the club following the death of his father. Kelly draws a walk to start the game. Everybody in the Braves organization wishes Dion nothing but the best in yep. Cincinnati. And truly it is a deal that could 
could help both teams. Each side claiming to be vulnerable from one side of the plate. They needed some left-handed hitting in Cincinnati. He'll provide them with a leadoff hitter because they've been using Barry Larkin in that spot. And contrary to reports on ESPN last night, the Reds are the ones that approach the Braves, not vice versa. And it all happened. It all started last Friday. Oh, and one the count to Jeff Blauser. Sully with a good size lead. Burke it over there. He goes diving back. Really, two guys traded that can. It's not like either one was traded from a terrible team to a contender. But one contender to another. He's back, all right. When Roberto Kelly was injured last year, he was leading the National League in hits. Injured his left shoulder. Doesn't get the breaking ball. Manwaring bluffs the throw to first, and Kelly scampers back. Braves won two out of three from the Giants in Atlanta earlier and had some pretty good success hitting against them. 33 hits with four homers against the Giants. The one pitcher who lost was John Smoltz who pitches today. Burkett lost the game in that series as well. Lined up the middle base hit. Kelly around second. He will have to stay there. Lewis plays a good center field and a shallow center field and Saved a base right there. First and second. Nobody out. Ryan Plusko, the batter. The guy that Dusty Baker likes about as much offensively as anyone in the Braves lineup, Jeff Blouser. He's always raved about Jeff's swing and has to watch him bounce another base hit off of his pitcher as the guy steps in who put on quite a show here in batting practice. Yeah, he had a couple upper deck shots here. You don't see that very often. That's the final now. Colorado beat the Mets 12-2. Two on and nobody out. Same two teams tomorrow. That's a 3.35 telecast Eastern time. Ground ball to first. Martinez to second out there. That's all they can get. You can see he was a little unsure of himself. He hasn't played first base all year till today, and that hesitation may have cost him a chance at a double play. Wanted to make sure he got at least one out and didn't want to throw this one away. Ball got to him quickly, but took a little extra time making sure he threw it accurately. The Braves have bounced into 53 double plays. Looked like there might be another one there. They lead the National League in all the major leagues in that category, but the Giants, not a whole lot better off. They've hit into 38. So Fred McGriff stands in with Ducks on the pond at first and third. And fouls one away, it's 0-1. Another look at that Kelly Sanders trade. Dion, I think, the better base dealer. Not much doubt that Kelly's the better defensive outfielder. Power, I guess, would be about the same. That's what would be nice about Roberto hitting me off with his pop. He could give you some first inning runs. Steve Rank on the outside corner. Oh and two, the count. David Justice waits on deck. Well, that didn't miss by much. One and two. Part of the reason the Braves have had such a great record when scoring first is that they get ahead early and put some pressure on the opposition. First and second inning runs this year have been plentiful. Opportunity here for McGriff. Braves have not done a good job lately at hitting with runners at third and less than two outs. Maybe they can get a run home here. 
Again, just missed inside, two and two. in his career, 8 out of 27 against Burke at a home run included. One here would be nice, wouldn't it? Be a nice start. Now, well, that's not a home run in a phone booth. Short left field, Matt Williams in foul territory. Has it for the second out. So McGriff can't get the run home. It's going to be up to Justice. It was 9 out of 31 against Burke at three of those hits home runs. Pretty obvious how they were working Fred there, trying to keep the ball in on his hands, and it paid off for them. David's wife, the movie star Halle Berry, was on our flight last What a delightful young lady she is. Mm -hmm. That's as nice as she could be. about David's new haircut, too. Yeah. The stretch and the pitch. Fastball inside. And that wasn't all. The guys all traveling pretty light for this three-day trip out here to San Francisco. They come right back home, so everybody mostly hanging with having garment bags. David left his hanging in his locker. <laughs> Hot shot. Got by him. Base hit. Plus go around second on his way to third. A run is in. And the Braves lead. Justice got it past Martinez. It's a single and an RBI. And runners still at first and third. The RBI is starting to come with some frequency now for David. That's his 17th. He took an 0 for yesterday, but he has sure been swinging the bat well. This is nine out of his last 10. And a tough hop for Martinez, but with a runner at third base, you've got to try somehow to get your body in front of it and knock it down. And pulling the runner on, it was tough for him to get off quickly enough to get his body in front of it. Terry Pendleton, the batter. He got a base hit in his last at-bat yesterday. Let's see if he can get one in his first at-bat today. There's a strike for Pendleton. Justice, 10 of his last 17 with runners in scoring position. Nothing wrong with that. The red-hot Mark Lemke is next, but they're two out in the inning. Strike at the knees. So Terry quickly behind 0 and 2. Terry had a good line drive base hit his last time up yesterday when the Braves were trying to rally in the ninth inning. Scored a run in the ninth after getting the base hit. Maybe that'll carry over to this brief road trip. Braves are 17 and 7 on the road. The stretch throw to first. Justice is back. Well, congratulations to our producer director on radio, Rick Shaw. He won the uh, Balderdash game on the airplane yesterday. <laughs> Upstairs, and that didn't miss by much. One and two is the count. And Rick finished first, and Pete finished last, but he'd never played before, so he... No, but Pete may have been the funniest. <laughs> Throw to first, Justice is back. Almost a balk there by Burkett, too. That first step, not 100% toward first base, just kind of a spin move. A ball and two strikes. Took a shot at left field. Followed it away. And that's a good idea. It's good to see Terry doing that because that keeps him from, to use the baseball expression, flying open too quickly. I was watching him during batting practice. He was driving the ball real well left-handed. 
was hitting the ball on a line, not so many long, lazy fly balls. Grounded to second, should end the inning. Patterson has it, and the inning is over. The Braves get a run on two hits and leave two. We go to the bottom of the first, one nothing. My husband Ray. Everybody knows Ray and Nada. And everyone knows the story. For this afternoon, rather, for the Giants. Leading it off, Darren Lewis in center field. John Patterson will be at second base. Then Matt Williams, Barry Bonds, and Willie McGee in the heart of the order. Dave Martinez gets the start at first. Then Royce Clayton, Kurt Manwaring, and the pitcher John Burkett. For the Braves defensively, Klesko, Kelly, and Justice in the outfield. Pendleton, Blouser, Lemke, and McGriff from third to first. Behind the plate, as always, Charlie O'Brien for John Smoltz, who makes his 10th start of the year. Boy, he could really use a win. Two and six on the year's last start. No decision against the Astros when the Braves rallied and beat Houston in 13 innings. But certainly he has pitched better on the road than he has at home. Yeah, I reported in the Atlanta papers some arm miseries. We'll see how he did. goes today. Darren Lewis leads it off and takes a fastball high. One ball, no strikes. High pop foul territory. Will it stay in play? No, it will not. It's about three rows behind the dugout, which, by the way, for the first time ever, the dugouts here in San Francisco are actually dugouts. And they're very comfortable, too. Yeah, very nice. Congratulations to the Giants on their design there. They even have heaters under the benches. And there's actually enough room there to accommodate the entire team. Just missed with a slider. Two balls and a strike. This guy's been doing a good job of getting on base. His last 22 games, he has 21 hits and 14 walks. And he courts that ball to center field, but Kelly is there. One away. One thing's for sure, when you look at the defensive alignment for the Braves now, you will not see, you, or you will see Roberto Kelly playing much shallower than the position taken by Deion Sanders. Yeah, Deion, I think without much doubt, played the deepest center field of anybody in the National League. John Patterson's the batter. He's had good luck against the Braves. He had a clutch pinch hit home run against them last year in the middle of that Torah pennant race. He's hitting just 211. And he takes the strike at 0 1. He has never batted against John Smokes. 1 0 Atlanta is our score. We're in the bottom of the first. Pop foul back and out of play, and John quickly out in front. Houston bats bottom of the ninth, tied with Florida 3-3 into the dirt. O'Brien blocks it. As we've seen in the past, anytime John seems to come into a ball game with an obstacle to overcome, he pitches very well. Last night he got off the bus at the hotel complaining of a terrible headache. And as you mentioned, he's also been experiencing some stiffness in his arm, so this may be a good day for him. The one-two pitch. Smoltz records his first strikeout. Matt Williams, the batter, hitting 255, but a very hard 255. 18 homers, 39 runs driven home. Good pitch by John there to record his first strikeout. You can see Patterson over the top of it. A little surprised to see it sink. Williams has never homered off Smoltz. But he does have 11 hits against him in 48 trips. Williams didn't think so, 0 and 1. Yeah. 
Matt Williams has 49 hits, 18 homers. Knock him off the plate. It's one and one. Facially reminds you a little bit of former Braves third baseman Bob Horner. Mm hmm. Bob probably looking in today down in Dallas. Two balls and a strike. Breaking ball right in there. Two of my favorite people in the world on the charter last night, Lois Johnson and husband Ernie. Ernie will be doing the game for Sports South here on Wednesday. The 2-2 pitch, here it is. Line, base hit, left field. Barry Bonds will bat. A solid Williams single. Bonds is hitting 301 for the year, but in his last 13 games, he's hitting 391. He has three career homers off Smoltz. And he's doing it of late, despite a sore right elbow and a tender left shoulder. He was hit under that protective pad on the elbow by Eric Hillman earlier in May, and then re-injured it a few weeks, or about a week ago. It's really been tender. And he banged into a wall in Atlanta and hurt his shoulder early in the year. All right on first, two down. Quite a turnaround for him from this month, from last. He's gotten his average up over 300, and he started slowly. That's in there. I guess people argue all the time about who's the best player, Bonds or Ken Griffey Jr. Griffey made some headlines out here, huh? Yes. He questions the commitment of the Seattle organization, according to the newspaper. Two and one in the count. I, I took that to mean that he was questioning his teammates a lot. You know, yeah. do they have the heart it takes to win? Are they just satisfied to be in the big leagues and get time in? Willie McGee would be next. Ah, Poppy got him this time. Plesko waiting, and the inning is over. Bonds is retired. One hit, no runs, no errors, one left. We played an inning. Graves lead at one nothing. John Burkett goes to work. A little looper foul and out of play into the seat. Zero and one. Joe Simpson, Skip Carey, with you from Candlestick Park. Mark had a good series against the Giants in Atlanta. Went seven for 12. How'd you get to be so short? What happened? Oh, your chair. The pitch swung and popped up into short center field. Aaron Lewis moving into right center and hauls it in. He's an outstanding outfielder, one away. Lemke, four out of 22 now in his career against John Burkett. Here's Charlie O'Brien. Charlie. Charlie is hitting 304 with two homers and 11 runs batted in. Started talking like the public address announcer here for a moment, and then got everything straightened out. O'Brien stands in there. And Burkett goes to work. Line in the left field, Bonds over, but that'll fall for a hit. O'Brien around first, but he'll stay there as Bonds gets the ball back in. A one-out O'Brien single, John Smoltz the batter. Let's see if he moves him over for Roberto Kelly. Sam's got three sacrifice bunts this year, one for 14 as a hitter. Hey, that female baseball team finally won a game, huh? They beat a 35 and over 
amateur team seven to two. Yesterday or the day before, runner going, they play hit and run, and it's going to work out to be perhaps a double play. O'Brien buried him out there, but they got the double play nonetheless. Four unassisted, four three. That would have been a base hit if they hadn't sent the runner. So uh, what a bad break for Atlanta, one hit. No runs, no errors, nobody left. We go to the bottom of the second. One nothing, Atlanta, our score. there never seems to be enough of it. And the last thing you can afford to do is run out of it. Time. So rest assured, Delta Airlines will help you make the most of it with over 4,900 flights a day to over 300 cities around the world. And best of all, we'll make sure you arrive relaxed and refreshed with plenty of time to spare. Delta Airlines. What would you do with a Motorola pager? Motorola pager. With a Motorola pager, the important people in your life can always reach you. Ooh, this works. The affordable, portable Motorola pager. Everybody needs some money sometimes. Everybody needs some time somehow. Hello? Rita. It's midnight. I need five hundred dollars. Now. I'll call Western Union. Just call 1-800-CALL-CASH, and you can send money from home. Must sometimes be nice. Western Union. Oh, yeah. The fastest way to send money. You just spray it on. You just spray it on. New Quicksilver wheel cleaner from Armorall. Just spray it on, and then just spray it off. That's it? That's it. Quicksilver wheel cleaner. Bobby Cox tried to cross up the Giants with a hit and run play here in the top of the second inning instead of the bunt, but unfortunately John Smoltz grounded it right to the second baseman who was moving toward the bag, then he got nailed on a good clean hard slide by Charlie O'Brien. The throw was low, but it was at least, at least on the money, and that's why they were still able to get Smoltz, but a good takeout by O'Brien. And the bottom half of the second inning about to unfold, and Willie McGee will lead it off. McGee hitting 286. Well, we hope you're all enjoying a happy Memorial Day, and we hope, too, that somewhere along the line in your celebration, you stop and honor those who are no longer with us, who gave their lives so we could enjoy a holiday like this in our fine country. McGee stands in. Willie, 35 years old, huh? Line drag, base hit left field. Pendleton had to play in, and that allowed the ball to get by him. So a tying run is aboard, and Dave Martinez, the batter. Willie McGee's been swinging the bat very well since he came back from a few days off nursing a tender hamstring pull. Four for his last eight and getting back in the lineup. Dave Martinez out of Valencia Community College down in Florida. Here's the banner, makes his home now in Safety Harbor, Florida. He's a native of New York. This guy's a pretty good ball player. Yeah, he is. His average doesn't reflect some of his success against John Smoltz, too. Yeah, 13 out of 40, a home run in Kruger. Downstairs, one ball, no strikes. Joe you know Simpson, Skip Carey, with you from Candlestick. Sorry, Skip, I was just going to say, he was thrown out of his first Major League game a few days ago by Mike Winters, who's behind the plate today. That's always a happy reunion. I'll bet, yeah. Both really look forward to it. First, nobody out. Very cloudy earlier today, but the skies have cleared. It's a lovely day in San Francisco now. Short and the bunt took it high. And snapped through the first. They might have had him if Charlie had gotten the throw on the money. Two balls, no strikes.
We'll be out of here early enough tonight to savor some of the fine restaurants in the Bay Area. Runner going. Ground ball. Picked the wrong man. Lumpke to first. One out. M Martinez guessed that Lemke would be covering. He guessed wrong, but he got the runner over. Runner at second, one out. And Royce Clayton, the banner. This Giants ball club coming in with an even 25 and 25 record. Second place in the West. Three games back of the Dodgers who are playing pretty good baseball right now. But Dusty Baker's had his hands tied most of this season with injuries to just about everybody. Thompson on the DL right now. He's lost Billy Swift. Of course, Buddy Black was on the DL to start the season. Lost Rod Beck for a while. Here's Clayton. A little high, one ball, no strength. Yeah, they got Robbie Thompson on the list, Bud Black, Rich Monteleone, Kevin Rogers with a circulatory problem. Bill Swift can come off the list June 2nd, and Trevor Wilson out for the year. So they've got a lot of pitching problems. Strike call to Clayton. It's one and one. Cubs lead the Phillies one nothing in the sixth at Wrigley. They are last in the league in hitting. Combine all that together, not scoring enough runs or not like they did last year when they led the league in hitting. Well, they just bludgeoned everybody the first half of the year. That ball is well hit, but Kelly makes the catch and is ready to fire. He's got a good throwing arm, too. He's got a better arm than Beyonce. Much better, but did you see how he positioned himself to get ready to throw? Even though he wasn't going to have time to get behind the ball and come to it. Watch how he shifts his feet right here to get in position to throw. Takes the throw over his throwing shoulder for a quick release. It's funny how some guys' careers wind up being so closely intertwined. It was because they had Roberto Kelly as a, they felt a bona fide center fielder that the Yankees felt they could release Deion Sanders. Mm -hmm. Which brought Deion to Atlanta. Gave John Turholz a chance to go out and get him. And now again, it's Kelly that sends him to Cincinnati and Kelly to Atlanta. The thing about Dion for me was after seeing him in New York and then seeing him in Atlanta, the strides he made, especially offensively, no reason to think that he can't continue to improve as a major league player. That's good for the Reds. Fastball is outside. One and one the count. where the agent was moaning and groaning because he thought that Dion would never be traded. Well, the agent should have had that in the contract. Two one, he chased a terrible ball on the count evens at two and two. Man wearing one out of 15 against Smoltz. He's batting 254 for the year. I think the, the biggest reaction from the player skip was that of surprise, like everybody else, yeah. like all of us, took everybody off guard. But just the slap in the face that, hey, anybody can be traded at any time unless you've got some kind of protection in your contract. O'Brien to the mound to talk to Smoltz. Yeah, I think human nature being what it is, I think all players hate it when a teammate is traded, whether it's a good trade or not, because it just makes them realize there, but for the grace of God, go on. Mm -hmm. you, you can be sent packing to a new city and have your life uprooted. That's part of this job. Yes, it is. Like Everybody Bobby. understands it, but nobody likes it. Like Bobby said in the opening comments, baseball is baseball. <laughs> Downstairs. Three and two, a full count to man wearing. You don't want to lose this guy. He's one of those guys last year that certainly contributed to their offensive pummeling of people. Had a career year, 275, five homers, 49 RBIs. He's a fine catcher, too. Mm -hmm. One of the best. Did he go? Yes. Man wearing is out, and the inning is over. Second strikeout for Smoltz. A leadoff single comes to nothing. One hit. No runs, no errors. One left. After two, Braves lead at one nothing. I know 
I'll never forget. This telecast is authorized under broadcasting rights granted by the Atlanta National League Baseball Club. It's intended solely for the entertainment of our audience. Any publication, rebroadcast, retransmission, or the use of the pictures, descriptions, or accounts of this game without the express written consent of the Atlanta National League Baseball Club and Skip Carey is prohibited. That's right. And also, don't forget, at the conclusion of today's game, we'll be selecting the Armor All Protectant player of the game. Actually, Pete and Don will do that, and we'll be doing the very same thing for a different sponsor over on radio. Thank you for clarifying that. More than welcome. We go to the third inning. And the top of the order up there for Atlanta. Kelly, a high chop. I don't know if they can throw him out. Clayton's going to try, but he's not going to get it. So Kelly has walked, scored the only run of the game, and now has his first hit as a member of the Braves. As I recall, he got a couple of hits like that against the Braves in Cincinnati. Bounced a couple of high choppers off the plate and gets his first hit as a Brave in the same fashion. He can really run. Here's Jeff Blouser. Well, I was awakened this morning with a phone call from former Braves producer Glenn Diamond. <laughs> Don't you love it? Oh, I sure do. It's always good to hear from the little guy. You know, there's some people... Now, I guess a full-time basketball producer. Huh? There are some people, too, that have the silly notion that if it's 9 o'clock where you are, it's 9 o'clock yeah. everywhere. That's right. Close. He got back. I'm beginning to understand even better why that sheepskin never quite got there at San Diego State. <laughs> Renner at first, nobody out. Blouser had a good swing, but he didn't catch up with it. He singled his first time. The man wearing keeps coming up out of his crouch, bluffing a throw to first because Kelly has a huge lead at first. And after the pitch is delivered, he even extends that towards second a little bit more. Started to go, held up. The pitch was inside. A ball and a strike. for the Braves, 0-2-0 oh, oh for the Giants. Kelly not afraid to get his uniform dirty. He's proven that already. looking at his career numbers and stolen bases he's had huge success in that category last year stole 21 and only played half a season he hasn't really had a good year this time he's been thrown out eight times in 17 attempts good throw might have had him there he's driving Burkett nuts yeah he looks like he's going he's got his weight shifted way out over his right foot ready to cross over and head to second Makes you wonder if the Giants might pitch out here. Steve and Elaine Pitt out here from Atlanta rooting for the Braves, celebrating a wedding anniversary. There goes the runner, pitches inside. There's the throw, bad throw, and he's in there. Kelly has his 10th stolen base of the year. And he did get a great jump and seemed to almost pick up speed with his head first slide. Good throw by Manwaring, but even a perfect throw I don't think would have gotten him. I think Braves fans are going to love watching this guy play. Tammy and Jeannie Edwards here rooting for the Braves from Roseville, California. The pitch. Swung line, right center field. Nobody's going to get that ball. McGee cuts it off. Kelly can walk home, and it's two to nothing.
Bowser's two for two. He drives in his 19th run of the year. He's starting to swing the bat like he did a year ago. So the stolen base pays off in a run. Yeah, it's nice when uh, when Jeff and David Justice are heating up at the same time. You got guys at the top and middle of your order that are producing runs and moving runners into scoring position. And an easy jog around the bases here for Kelly after stealing the base. Klesko hit into a fielder's choice his first time, and he hits this one a mile high, fairly deep in center. Lewis going back, Lowser tagging. Here's the catch, but Jeff will wisely stay where he is. Klesko just missed getting it out of here, one away. And Fred McGriff, the batter, he fouled the third his first time. Brian said that the more he gets to see the pitchers, like for this time around, his second time to get to see Burkett this year, he says, I'm just learning every at bat a little more of their tendency, the pitchers in the National League, scouting reports are helping. And I'll, he said, I think I'll start feeling even more comfortable once I see guys second and third time around. Home run cut from a grip, but it comes up empty. White Sox lead the Yankees 5-0 there on the top of the seventh in New York. Crowd of 25,000 or thereabouts on hand. Another day game tomorrow. If you like different starting times, you've come to the right place for this series. Well, we've got them all over the place. I never know what time it is when I come out of here anyway. <laughs> First time around, first at bat, they used some good fastballs. Right in on Fred's hands, this at bat, some good split finger pitches that he's been swinging over the top of. Burkett has a good split finger pitch. For the fans who weren't with us at the outset, when you talked with Bobby Cox, I thought it was very interesting that right now Greg McMichael is his closer and his setup man is Greg Olson, and that is subject to change, of course, depending on how things go, but that's the status of that deal right now. And a million congratulations to Greg Olson. Yeah, a million is right. Two balls, two strikes. Runner at first, one out, a run in. It's 2 nothing Atlanta. Lowser is back. And as usual, Hal Galima right on top of things knowing that John Burkett fired more pickoff attempts than any other pitcher in the National League, over 300 of them. There goes Mauser, pitches a strike, there's the throw. He's out, getting over. Strike him out, throw him out. Two six on the play of second. Burkett records his first strikeout. A run on two hits, nobody left. We go to the bottom of the third. Braves lead it, two nothing. If the tie had never been invented, if pantyhose is self-destructed upon creation, then all there was to wear were the loose, free clothes, good as a remix, then life would be truly enjoyable. Give us him so relaxed. And you would be truly comfortable. Food of the room. Clothes that make you feel good. What is it about cars and shells? What is it that makes Shell the world's best-selling gasoline? Perhaps it's just chemistry. Shell, the world's best-selling gasoline. GBS presents A Century of Women, American women as they lived and loved. Starring
between Justin Bacon, Olivia Dukakis, and Jasmine Guy, narrated by Jane Fonda. Every generation has a story to tell. This is ours. A Century of Women, beginning June 7th. A PBS original production. Sponsored in part by Sprint. We go to the bottom half of the third inning. Braves on top two to nothing. And a reminder that we'll be coming back your way tomorrow afternoon, 3.30 Eastern time will be the start for that game. And it'll be Steve Avery against, Avery against William Van Landingham for the Giants. Then Wednesday, Sports South for you folks in the Southeast. And we'll come your way at 10.30 for that one. That'll have Greg Maddox against Solomon Torres. John Burkett will lead off the giant half of the third inning. Fastball up and in, one ball, no strikes. I'm guessing that after Burkett does whatever he's to do, Jones might lay the National League scores on you. One and one is the count. Nobody on, nobody on, third inning. I pop foul out of play. Burkett's bingo average, 042, translates into a one for 24. The one two to the right hand hitter. Breaking ball stayed a little high. O'Brien thought he had him struck out. Two and two. John, three balls, two strikes. Smoltz rubs up the baseball. And now gets ready for the 3-2 pitch. for it especially with this ball club scores in the National League some finals Houston sent everybody home from the Astrodome with a run in the ninth Colorado got home runs from Johnny Vanderwall Andres Galarraga his 18th the time Matt Williams for the league lead and Mike Kingery Chicago and Philadelphia go on at it at Wrigley Field one nothing Derek May is homer there the other games get underway a little bit later on we'll give the American League scores a little bit later Darren Lewis is the batter. He flied to center his first time. Oh, and one the count. Lewis checks out his third base coach, Wendell Kim. It was almost as if Smoltz talked himself into that walk. He got to three and two and then took forever before he threw the next pitch and came nowhere near. Oh, one and one the count. You know how Greg Maddox sometimes appears to just be on autopilot with uh, an idea of what he wants to do before every batter almost. He knows exactly what he's going to do with each pitch. The bond is foul. In order to register the out. I don't know, and I'd have to ask John to find this out, if he has that kind of plan of attack as each batter steps in there, but it seems like after each pitch is thrown, then he decides now what do I do here now how do I want to throw this pitch and not about how to get the out and sometimes that leads to deep counts and having to deliver maybe a pitch that he doesn't want to throw when he's behind one and two the count lined up the middle base hit the tying runs are aboard with nobody out He was ahead in the count, but he lost him. It was a one-two pitch. The one thing I wouldn't want if I was a hitter against John Smoltz was to get ahead in the count, or get behind in the count, rather, with his stuff, knowing how he could put me away. But that was a fastball belt high. 
sets up just an awful pitch for the one-two count. Well, let's see if he can get out of it. John Patterson is the batter. Patterson, a strikeout victim his first time. The league's home run leader, Matt Williams, is on deck. Or, as Joe told you, tied for the league lead now with Andres Galarraga. Fouled off at a home plate, 0-1. If there's a downside for Matt Williams, it's that he hits into a lot of double plays, too. He and Javi Lopez have grounded into nine double plays, which is the highest in the National League. So maybe Smoltz can get Patterson and then think about a possible ground ball from Williams, or at least hope for one. Patterson struck out his first time. Williams singled. Just missed. A ball and a strike. barely hitting 200. He has seven, seven hits in his last 22 at bats and in the clutch, that's where he's been the best. Fastball upstairs got him one away. So Smoltz comes up with a big pitch when he needs to. But he's not out of the woods yet. Good curve ball set up a good fastball that Patterson tried to pull his hands in to get around on and was late. Watch him pull his hands in close to his body. No chance at all to catch up to the fastball that way. John blew it by him. Big strikeout for him. But he's got a tough cookie up there now. Williams, 12 out of 49 in his career against Smoltz. He has no home runs against him. ball no strikes bonds is next check swing strike one and one I don't know if it's just our angle from from this high up skip or not but it looks like the Braves middle infielders are really pinching close up the middle for this double play possibility they're playing deep and maybe that's why they have to play so close to the bag they're not pulled in at double play depth big hole on the left side between Blouser and Pendleton ahead in the count one and two sailing into the press box and almost got Ray R Ratto, one of my favorite people of Raider for the examiner out here. A ball and two strikes. I pop foul back. That'll reach the seats. It's still one and two. Boy, when you set the table for Williams and Bonds, that's a little scary. It's not the way you want to go about your business. Especially the way Bonds is swinging the bat now. Pops away. Runners at second and third. The double play is no longer an option. Wild pitch on Smoltz. Third one this year on John. Charlie was in a good position there to block it. Made a nice shift, but the ball just came up off the heel of his glove. Best laid plans of catchers. They try their best to keep the ball in front of them, but you can't control every bounce. So we await a 2-2 pitch to Williams. Ah, pop. That won't get a run home. Who wants it? 
Lauser is calling for it, so is Pendleton. Pendleton makes the catch. Now you got first base open. I know what I'd do. Yep. You don't like to put the go-ahead run on base, but it's early enough that with this guy up there, I think I'd take my chances with Willie McGee. That's funny. Barry's looking over in the Braves' dugout to see what Bobby's going to do. He's doing exactly what I think he should do. Can't second-guess this one. How many intentional walks for him? This will be the 34th walk for Bonds, the ninth intentional pass. And a lot of the other ones were not registered as intentional, but they were. Because you never give in to this guy. He had three hits in the series in Atlanta. They all came in one game. He did have a home run. And then the Braves kind of changed their philosophy almost about the way they were going to pitch him. They started really challenging him with fastballs inside third of the plate. They were jamming him. He was having a little trouble getting around on the ball, and it was effective. McGee is the Giants' statistically best two-out clutch hitter, but I still think the old theory is don't let a superstar beat you. McGee's a fine player, but he's not Barry Bonds. Neither is anybody else. Base is loaded, two out. Got to throw strikes now. Not that way. One ball, no strikes. A runner at every base. One and one. He jammed it. Cubs have increased their lead to three nothing over the Phillies. They're in the bottom of the seventh. McGee will chase a bad ball once in a while if you get ahead in the count. He'll chase a ball in the dirt once in a while, but he's, he always will do that when he's behind trying to guard the plate. Drilled into center field. Kelly coming on. They hit. One run in. The throw to the plate. He is going to be safe. They say O'Brien missed him in a bad argument. A perfect throw. I don't know if the tag got there before the foot hit the plate, but I didn't think there was any doubt at all that Darren Lewis's foot did catch home plate. Great throw by Roberto Kelly, who got a good bounce, cut it loose, throw right on the money. Charlie O'Brien's foot not in front of home plate. He did not have the plate blocked. Good call, Mike Winters. That's right. The replay shows again conclusively that the umpire was right. Charlie's left foot was on the first base side of the plate. He thought he had the plate blocked, but didn't. But a very strong and accurate throw by Kelly. Well, the strategy didn't work, but I say again, that's the way you had to play it. The walk to the pitcher, once again, comes home to roost. Curve strike, we're tied 2-2. And the Giants bid to take the lead. McGee now with 20 runs driven home. One and one the count. The Colders are here from Atlanta rooting for the Braves. Digs it out, and the inning is over, but not before the Giants rally the tight. Two hits, two runs. No errors, two left. At the end of three, we're tied 2-2. Two -two. A new wind is rising, bringing change, bringing the all-new Ford Windstar. 
A totally new minivan. Wingstar is the only minivan that meets all passenger car safety standards. And has dual airbags, five mile an hour bumpers, and four wheel anti-lock brakes standard. Safety that takes the minivan in a whole new direction. The all new front wheel drive Ford Windstar. The future of minivans begins today. What are you doing here, Fred? I'm the new star for Days Inn. Come on, everybody knows I'm their spokesperson. Oh, yeah? Well, I've been staying at Days Inn since the Stone Age. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but kids under 12 stay scot-free. I kind of like the sound of Fred free better. Oh, yeah? Well, I... Hey, Days Inn is a family fun right now. The kids get these Flintstone travel packs free. Correct all three. Call 1-800-Days Inn. When sports cream... When arms are sore, when legs ache, when muscles hurt. Why sports cream? Massaging sports cream in brings fast pain relief. No medicine smell, no odor. Why sports cream? Because it works. The real story, the legend, and the rebels who ride. Harley Davidson, the American motorcycle. 805 Eastern, Thursday night. Hey, we're giving away two awesome Harleys. But if you want to win, you better watch. We go to the fourth inning here. David Justice will lead it off. That was sort of a crummy bottom of the third for Atlanta. Let's hope things get better. Just a single homer run his first time. It was his 17th RBI of the year. in the fog. <laughs> One ball, no strikes. At the knees, Gustav's not too sure. And the count evens at a ball and a strike. Brees have had a hit, at least one hit in every inning against Burkett, which might lead you to believe he's pitching up a little bit more than usual. Two balls and a strike. Usually gets a lot of ground ball out. American League Baseball, Boston beat Kansas City 6-5. Seattle over Minnesota 12-0. Randy Johnson now 6-3. Did Junior hit a homer? No, Junior did not. Edgar Martinez did, and Keith Mitchell hit two. Texas 5-4 over Milwaukee, and the White Sox lead the Yankees 5-1 in the eighth inning. The pitch. Line right field. There's a hit. McGee over quickly to cut it out, and he'll hold Pendleton the first. Mark Lemke is the banner. He popped the center his first time. Pitch before to Justice was upstairs that he hit hard. Look where this location is. Off-speed pitch, but he left it up and out over the plate. And Terry raked it. Lemke with a long look at third base coach Jimmy Williams. Managers, when you've got a hitter like Lemke who's going good, they might be a little reluctant to move the runner. In other words, use a hit and run play and take the bat out of his hands. But this might be a good situation for the Braves to try something. The right back up the middle might be a double play. Out there, out there. Second double play hit into. Third double play hit into by the Braves. One hit, no runs, no errors. And nobody left. Bottom of the fourth, all tied, 2-2. Two -two.
said, all men are great in their dreams. Suddenly, you don't feel so great anymore. You'll do the big things later. You hit the snooze bar. You hit the snooze bar. You hit the snooze bar. You hit the shower. You start soaping up with Coast. <laughs> Coast is rock fuel for the senses. Coast is a big bowl blast off that turns you back into a human dynamo. Coast, the eye-opener. Presenting the Ryobi Detail Sander. It gets into all those small, tight spaces where other sanders can't reach. And with special add-on accessories, it also prepares surfaces for painting. Scrapes paint and adhesive off glass, wood, and metal. Even polishes and buffs to a brilliant finish. In fact, you can use the Ryobi Detail Sander any place your imagination takes you. We go to the bottom of the fourth. Bryce Clayton will lead it off. Jump in here anytime you like, Joe. I was just thinking about Clayton and how he has, we've always known he's a pretty good fielder, his reputation, that of a good glove guy, and he's not made an error in his last 29 ball games. Upstairs, one ball, no strikes. I would guess that he is a future all-star shortstop. Uh -huh. Fine young prospect. And strong, too. He's got a good body for a shortstop. I think last year, a lot of these Giants really grew up. They went through a great pennant race. They lost it, but there's certainly no shame in it. They, they played good baseball. The Braves just were phenomenal. They're struggling a little bit this year because of their pitching, and the Dodgers are a much, much improved team. Yeah, but there are those in the Giants camp that also talk about how it took so much out of them last year that some of the guys, especially some of the younger players like Clayton or Lewis or Manwaring, are fighting real hard to try to regain that same type of edge that they had last year where they were so brilliant. And they're having a little trouble, perhaps not measuring up to the greatness that they had early in the season. Victimizes him. One away. Four strikeouts for Smoltz. Good breaking ball here. At least it was outside. Looked like watching it in live action, it was lower than that. He got maybe got away with one there. Giants have the worst batting average in the major leagues as a team. 244. Just 228 with runners in scoring position. They do lead the league in fielding. 990. Fastball high and away to Mandler. And you can never overestimate or the value of defense in terms of winning because even if you're not scoring runs, if you're catching the ball and throwing people out, you don't have to score quite as many to win. And it's really surprising to me, at least, that a team playing on a natural surface leads the league in fielding. Yeah. Because you don't get the... You get more bad hops on this kind of field than you do on that junk astroturf or whatever. Right off his thumbs, he found that one back. One out here in the bottom of the fourth. Joe Simpson, Skip Carey with you. It's a 2-2 ball game. The Braves had a 2-0 lead. certainly shortened up the foul territory behind home plate. There's still a ton of it, but it's been reduced by about 10 or 15 feet anyway. And some new seats along the lines, too. Yeah, and those fans got to be sharp because they're dangerously close to the action. Targets. Full count, three and two.
So payoff pitch to Manwaring. Got him. Low fire. Second time Manwaring has been on out on strikes. Fifth strikeout for John. And here's Burkett who led off the third with a walk that led to two runs. You said it correctly when you walked him to start that and you said you're asking for trouble and he got it. And it was. You can almost feel it coming in spots like that. Oh and one. Braves have six hits Giants have four and the game is tied 2-2. Oh and two. He's a pitch away from striking out the side. If you're at home thinking that Burkett was setting him up, trying to make himself look bad so that he can rip this pitch, you're wrong. They'll have to throw him out. And they do. Six strikeouts for Smoltz. He strikes out the side, and after four, we're tied to two. Nineteen ninety four Atlanta Braves Baseball on PBS is brought to you by Armor All and by Honda. The competition included more than one hundred of the world's best cars. But in the end, only one was judged a car ahead. Motor Trends Import Car of the Year, the new Accord from Honda. To prove that Armor All with that that X keeps your dad looking clean, even in the dustiest conditions, we're here at the San Diego 500. We've left this side of the dash untreated, while on the other side, we've applied Armor All with that that X. So let's go. Well, there you have it. Armor All with Dust Ad X keeps your dash looking clean. Armor All with Dust Ad X. Sometimes when I explain my customers' prescriptions, Dorothy, how are you? They may have other things on their mind. I think this will make Maybe they don't feel well. Thank you, Jim. Or they're a bit distracted. Great. But they could miss something important. So now we give our customers an Eckerd RX advisor with new prescriptions. Personalized with all the facts on their medication, like proper use, possible side effects, and more. The Eckerd RX Advisor. Kind of like taking me home with you. Hope you feel better. Only on paper. Bye-bye. What an ugly scene. Coming up on TBS, Sylvester Stallone stars as a trucker trying to gain his son's love in Over the Top, coming up after baseball here on TBS. Charlie O'Brien leads off the fifth inning. And John Burkett ready to sling his first pitch of the fifth inning. Boy, these two guys are settling down, Burkett and John Smoltz. This might go on for a while today. There's a strike, 0 1. In the ninth, the White Sox lead the Yankees 5 to 1. Agrees with that one. Very vociferously. And here comes Jimmy Williams to try to keep him in the ball game. Mike Winters wants Charlie O'Brien to get back in the box. Let's take a look at the pitch. I can see why he's complaining. Uh huh. That was a high pitch. One and two is the count. Off his thumbs, fouled it back. Still a ball and two strikes. 
Another spot where you've got to be heads up in this ballpark is right behind home plate. Their screen behind home plate is very low, not too wide. There's some low foul tips that find their way into the seats, too. Two and two. John Smoltz waits on deck. And then Roberto Kelly will hit. There's a high drive into left field. Did he get enough? Bonds going back to the wall. He looks up. Mike Winters made Charlie mad, and he punished the baseball. And Charlie's still staring at Mike Winters as he rounds the bases. He rounded first. He looked back at home plate. He rounded second. He looked back at home plate. He's a hot-blooded guy, I tell you. He loves to win, and he doesn't like anybody taking advantage of him or his teammates. You saw his aggressiveness on the base pads early in the game when he took out Patterson. Here's John Smokes, and here's a look at the homer. Hanging breaking ball. The crowd is chanting, throw it back. They want whoever caught that home run to fire it back out on the field, but they're not getting any satisfaction. High pop foul out of play for Smokes. Three seventy-two is the tail of the tape on O'Brien. I don't know why we ever bother to give those. They're never accurate. Smokes didn't like that call. But it looked like a pretty good pitch. Smoltz says goodbye to Winters. He is the first out here. Second strike out for Burke. The Pacers just beat the Knicks to tie their NBA series 2-2. What was the score, Killer? 83-77 was the final. Well, they're clamping some defense on them, aren't they? That Larry Brown. I'll tell you what, everybody talks about how he changes jobs a lot, and he does, but he's a heck of a coach. Oh, and one, the count to Kelly, who's one for one with a walk, a stolen base, a run scored. Bounces that one foul. Two runs scored. He's having quite a debut. It's kind of funny to see a guy walk into a clubhouse with his suitcase, his baseball bag, and his box of bats. <laughs> Fastball outside. Roberto had to go home to Cincinnati first because they were just at the end of a road trip. Had to repack. Tap to short. Clayton in. Up. Boots it. See how they score it. Probably an air. It is an air on the shortstop, Royce Clayton. First air he's made in 29 games. And he knew he had to hurry. I want you to watch Roberto Kelly running down the line. Most guys, when they run down the line and there's an error made, they just keep running right on down through first and into right field. But when he realized there was not going to be a play made at first, he threw the brakes on and was ready to head to second if the ball had rolled into left field. Heads up play. It's 3-2 Atlanta here, and Jeff Blauser, who has a couple of hits, stands in. Throw to first, Kelly is back. He is now 10 of 18 in the stolen base department. One for one as a brave. Hot shot. Caught. Double play. Inning over. Fourth double play of the day for Atlanta. Well, that takes care of that. But the Braves take the lead on the... Home run from O'Brien. It was the only hit in the inning. There was an error. Nobody was left. At the end of four and a half, your score, Braves three, Giants two. 
about the penalty box over here, Pete. There you go. Not a bad start for Roberto Kelly today, huh? I would say getting on base three times, scoring two runs, stealing a base, couple of nice defensive plays. He's making his presence felt immediately. Braves lead it three to two. Lewis to lead it off in the bottom of the fifth inning for the Giants. Smoltz's first one is downstairs, and it's one and zero. Oh. It's been a strange day already for John Smoltz. Giants with a base runner in every inning but the fourth. There's a strike, and it's one and one. Problems in the fourth started when he walked the pitcher, hitting a cool 042. That doesn't happen too often. Off the fist, shallow right field. Justice, sunglasses down. One gone. That's five in a row set down by John Smoltz. Weather like we are not used to here at Candlestick. Very unusual. You see the kind of gray clouds overhead. It's a bright sky. The sun not directly shining, but it's tough on the outfielders. And this is the first time I think I have ever heard you or me say we overdressed for Candlestick. Shirt sleeve weather at Candlestick Park. First pitch to Patterson out of play, and it's 0-1. You don't see that too often here at Candlestick, except on half-price nights on the beverages, then there are a lot of people like that. Not too many day games do you see the normal people wearing T-shirts. One ball, one strike, one out. Make it two and one. chance for Lempe. Six in a row set down by John Smoltz. In our very colorful booth today, I notice your colors are red on your talk back. Orange is the spare, and I get lovely blue for my colors. Oh, yeah, I see what you're talking about now. Play by we're play. talking about the color of the lights. No, they're different. That's confusing. Here's Matt Williams. Single in the first inning. Popped a third in the third inning. A big out for John Smoltz. No balls in a strike. Getting Matt Williams out. Barnes was intentionally walked. But then Willie McGee crossed up the strategy. Williams has hit John Smoltz fairly well. But in 50 ABs against the Braves right-hander, he has never hit a homer. 12 for 50. In the air, right side, Limpy fights the sun. Still battling it. Oh, and got it. A tough play for Mark Limpy. But another one, two, three inning for John Smoltz. He has now set down seven in a row. We've completed five at Candlestick, and the Rays are leading it three to two. Congratulations to John Smoltz. That last strikeout, his sixth of the ball game, it gave him 1,000 for his career. A nice milestone. Inside corner, and it's one and two to Ryan Klesko. That pitch in the same area is the one that caused the little disagreement between Charlie O'Brien and Mike Winters. Not even two and two. If you're an infielder or an outfielder, you have to love working behind Burkett. Only 21 base on balls in 71 innings coming into this ballgame. He doesn't waste any time. 
and no wasted effort in his pitching either. Now the play is still two and two. Wonder if that's the same starting position he uses. Do they call it a stance in bowling? Team? Yeah, your starting stance, sure. Looks like he's bowling, doesn't he? Yeah, he does. Probably uses a three-step approach. He takes care of Quesco. That's strikeout number three, the first one swinging. Third strikeout of the game for Burkett. Threw him that split finger pitch on the 2-2 offering. Our athletic -like trivia question now, which two players share the National League record for most home runs in a season as a rookie? And we'll have the answer for you in the next half inning. One gone for Fred McGriff. He's popped the third, stuck out looking. He wasn't too happy with the call on the inside corner to him. Fred at 287. Out of play, and it's 0 1. Braves with single runs in the first, third, and the fifth. The Giants, both of their runs coming in the bottom of the third inning, a two run single by Willie McGee. 3 7 and 0 for the Braves, two runs for it, and one error for the Giants. That's inside, and it's one and one. Obviously, most of the conversation before the ball game, and I know most of the conversation yesterday around Atlanta and the Braves. A strike to McGriff, and it's one and two, centering around the Roberto Kelly Deion Sanders trade. I checked with some friends of mine back in Atlanta. First, the one two pitch. Too much time by Burkett, McGriff. I'll check with some friends that I kind of get the... I mean, check the pulse of the city. Mm -hmm. The pitch to McGriff got him. Two strikeouts in a row, four in the ballgame for Burkett. Two outs for David Justice. So I made a call and I said, well, what do you think? He said, well, some people are upset. And I said, well, who were they? At whom are they upset? So a little bit upset at John Sherholtz. They said... We figure it's four times that people down here have been upset at John. Number one was when he re-signed Otis Nixon after Nixon had been suspended. Number two, when he let Otis Nixon get away and sign someplace else. Number three was when he signed Deion Sanders to a multi-year contract after he was gone for a while. And number four was when he traded Deion Sanders, which just shows to go you, you can't please everybody, can you? The 1-0 pitch to Justice. It's 2-0. On the ground. Tough play for Martinez, but he makes it. Bucket covers. And that'll do it for the Braves here in the sixth inning. Nice play by Dave Martinez. Braves go one, two, three. Bottom of the six rolling around. The Braves are on top, three to two. Hey, what are you doing here, Fred? I'm the new star for Days In. Come on, everybody knows I'm their spokesperson. Oh, yeah? Well, I've been staying at Days In since the Stone Age. Hey, hey, hey. But you better go off they Scott Free. You kind of like the sound of Fred Free, don't you? Oh, yeah? Oh, he's the family right now. You should be the Free Shuttle Pack Free. Collect all three. Oh, what are you going to do, Daisy? The There's a place in my heart for the sunrise. For the late afternoon feel of the summer's breeze. And there's a place in my home where my heart is always full. Roof windows and skylights made to draw you closer to the world outside and closer to yourself. Because Velux knows the most important world you live in is the one you call your own. To prove that I'm wrong and not that X deep that what you think per year is at 10 years old, I'm hungry. Well, there you have it. I'm wrong with just that X. Keeps your dash looking clean.
Brown Flex Control. The first electric shaver with a pivoting head. It automatically adjusts to every contour of your face. Flex Control from Braun. Braun, the last word in shavers. Still 3-2 Atlanta as we go to the bottom half of the sixth inning. Let's answer today's Athlac trivia question, which was which two players share the National League record for most home runs in a season as a rookie. And here's the answer. Wally Berger and Frank Robinson, each with 38. Braves up by one. Bonds, McGee, and Martinez. First three do up, bottom of the sixth inning. John Smoltz, after a shaky third inning, has set down seven in a row. Griff is there. He'll feed Smoltz. One pitch, one out. You know, we often kid players when we're in these away cities. Players from that area have to leave all the tickets for relatives. You know who was leaving all the tickets this morning, don't you? I have a feeling I know. Bobby Cox. The Cox clan has assembled here from all over California. He had over 40 tickets to leave today. I wonder if he went to any of the players and said, I'll swap you mine. First with the McGee strike. Come up. He was going down that list before the game, just hoping he had remembered everybody. <laughs> oh, and one, the McGee. Downstairs, it's one and one. A couple of folks visiting out from Atlanta. They were married over the weekend and they're spending their honeymoon in San Francisco. Jay and Cappy Memory. I want to wish them all the best. Change up low. Two and one. Other honeymooners here from Selma, California. Jason and Danette Lund, part of the group that's here visiting Bobby. That's Bobby's hometown. Right. So. Chance for Lemke. It goes easily. Nine in a row set down by John Smoltz. Pitching, you kind of have to like the folks who are here. The Giants and the Braves. Giants number three, the Braves number one in pitching in the National League. And four of the top six pitchers in the National League, win-wise, for the last four years in this part of this year. Right here, there's one of them right there. He is number three with 65 wins. First one to Martinez, ball one. Greg Maddox leads the National League over the last four years with 78. Tom Glavin right behind him with 77. And John Smoltz, number six, with 60. 2-0 to Martinez. There you are right there. And if you want to break it down even further, Brave starters outstanding. 286, the Giants not too shabby either. In the air to center, another chance for Roberto Kelly. He's got it. Makes it look easy. Another one, two, three inning for Smoltz. Ten in a row set down. Six in the books from Candlestick, and the Rays lead it by one. Oh, boy. Let's count the palm trees again. Why are you looking at me like that, Iggy? You okay? Stop looking at me like that, would ya? You're creeping me out. Cut that out, man. With a great taste that won't fill you up and never lets you down, make it a Bud Light. Hey, you're gonna put my head off. The real story, the legend, and the rebels who died. Harley Davidson, the American Motorcycle. 805 Easter, Thursday night. Hey, we're giving away two awesome Harley. But if you want to be here, you better watch. When sports cream, when arms are sore, when legs ache, when muscles hurt. Why sports cream? Massaging sports cream in brings fast pain relief. No medicine smell, no odor. Why sports cream? Because it works. Between my family and my job, I don't have time for a headache. And I've never found a pain reliever that works faster than good in headache powder. Make it good. And make it fast. In fact, doctors preferred the goodies formula 3 to 1 over BC's. 3 to 1. Hey, when I get a bad headache, I can't just take a break away from some ordinary pain relief to kick in. Make it fast. Goodies in powders and tablets. 
for the seventh and a look at our Budweiser game summary. A good start for Roberto Kelly in a Braves uniform. Good day for Charlie O'Brien. Most of the damage for the Giants done by Willie McGee. He has half their base hits. Pendleton will lead it up and to take you the rest of the way, Pete Van Weeren. Okay, thank you, Don Terry. One for two. He's grounded out to second and single. And he takes the first pitch from Burkett in the dirt. Ball one. Pendleton, Lemke, and O'Brien do up here in the top of the seventh.
We go to the bottom half of inning seven. Braves leading at 3-2. The lower third of the order to up for the Giants. And we may see a pinch hitter. As Dave Burba has begun to throw in the San Francisco bullpen. Tony Tarasco, the new left fielder for Atlanta. And it'll be Royce Clayton leading off against John Smoltz here. Clayton is flying to center and struck out. two-run single over to McGee back in the third. It's like two different pitchers. That inning versus the last three innings, walking the pitcher to start it. Not a real good pitch to Lewis, and then the pitch to McGee, not a real good one. But after that, unhittable. And he's quickly ahead in the count of Royce Clayton on one. Now the O2 off 
break. That's all the best. Here's strikeout number eight for John Smoltz. Another one, two, three, and he's now retired 13 consecutive hitters. We go the eighth inning, still three, two, and eleven. Move by Burr there. 
if you see a guy has a strike zone a certain way, if you stay right in it, make somebody else do the adjusting. Don't do any for him. That misses low in the count even. One ball and strike. Three runs, seven hits for the Braves. Two runs, four hits, one error for the Giants. We're in the eighth. pitching coach up here with us, but if you watch giant pitchers who come up through the organization that go through Joel Horland at AAA and Todd Oaks at uh, Class A and, and Keith Comstock at A and Steve Klein AA, you'll see a lot of similarities in their mechanics. Basic, simple deliveries where the pitchers almost always end up square using good leverage. No, very few of them throw across that front leg. They open the front side but look, uh, with a minimum of effort. Look at this one. And high. Three and one. Don't get Tarasco on deck. You know who the pitching coach is for the Scottsdale Giants in the uh, rookie league? Former Brave. Former Brave. Elias Sosa and a former teammate of mine. Ball four to Jeff Blauser up high. And that's the first walk issued by Bourbon. And now Tony Tarasco will bat for the first time. Tarasco took over in left field a couple of minutes ago. For Goes in 3 0 for the year, four homers and seven runs driven in. Normally, when a pitcher gets to the big leagues, you don't do a whole lot of tinkering with him. So, a pitcher's identity is formed by those who influence him at the minor league level. If anything, at the big league level, it's a matter of just fine tuning. That's why I think it's so important to have really quality guys like both these organizations have at the minor leagues. Two men out with Blouser at first. taking high ball and you're right about that because almost every major league pitcher that you talk to if you talk about a pitch that's become a good one for them or if you talk about a situation that they seem to be able to deal with or a role that they seem to be able to deal with uh, very professionally it's usually somebody in the minor leagues that uh, prepared them right that taught them this we talked to uh, charlie huff even somebody who has a trick pitch like charlie huff was taught by goldie Cole. Former scout and a guy who worked with minor league pitching. And most of the successful big league pitching coaches had to work very hard at the minor league level. Because I don't think you can coach at the big league level if you only know one way to do it. I think you have to have worked through a lot of different ways of getting people out yourself, a lot of get different deliveries. And I think you have to have worked with a lot of different personalities and a lot of different mechanics before you can be good at, at shepherding a 10 or 11 man staff. Here's the stretch in the 1-0 to Tarasco taking low and outside ball, too. When you talk to any of the Braves pitchers who came up through the Braves organizations, almost all of them have good things to say about Bill Slack of Durham, for example. Yes. Either a pickoff move or something like that that he worked with them on. He's been the Braves pitching coach at either Durham or Greenville for years. That's up high in the count 3-0. Oh, and Burba has struck out the first two. Having problems with control now. He walked Blauser in a 3-1 pitch. Now it's 3-0 on Durasco. Steve Fry, a lefty up in the Giants bullpen. Well, you know my son Darren, who only spent extended spring training with the Braves organization. And Durasco walks on four straight. Back-to-back -back walks. Runners first and second for Fred McGriff. He, a group of kids that really didn't get a chance or weren't really good enough to play very long in the minor league system. But to a man, they echo that. So... I think it's a pretty gifted personality-wise and teaching-wise when players who get released or players who don't play have the same nice things to say about you as players who are successful at the big leagues. You see Dusty Baker strolling to the bound. You know what that means. It's time now for the Motorola Pagers call to the bullpen. keep in touch with the people you want to keep in touch with. So what are you waiting for? Get the pager from Motorola. 
the leader in paging. Our family's always been careful when it comes to the medicines we take. I remember there was only one brand of pain reliever my mother ever trusted. Goodies. Today, we still rely on goodies for headaches or any kind of pain. We really like goodies pain relief tablets. They're at the form of goodies headache powders, made with the same proven formula. This is strong, this is fast. For this family, for any kind of pain, we trust goodies. Goodies, a name you can trust. Top of the eighth, Bray's leading at three to two. You want a starting time? We have a starting time for you. Today, 2.05, 5.05 uh, Eastern Daylight Time. Tomorrow at 3.30 Eastern Daylight Time. Same two ball clubs going against each other. Then on Wednesday, a 10.30 Eastern Daylight Time start. We will not have it for you on TBS, but we ask that you will tune in.